met Queenie when she was just a baby. She was probably six months old. We don't know for sure because she was imported from Thailand, Siam. And so we got her at a pet store in New York City. And I was just nine years old and Queenie was approximately six months old. So we grew up together, literally grew up together. And she stayed with us until 1967 when um, we sold her because my dad had passed away, I had gotten married, moved away, and it just wasn't fair to her to just be standing around doing nothing. So um, we grew up together. And describe we were best buddies. Um, and before I got out of school, um, or well, I, let me back up. In the winter of 58 and 59, we lived up in Callahan, Florida. I was in high school up there. My dad was down here with Queenie and the other animals that we had that did circus acts. So I would come down on the weekends. But the next winter, I didn't go to regular school at all. I just took correspondence courses. And in fact, used the side of the pool to do my studying, my biology and my US history or whatever I was studying at the time. Um, much to the dismay of the kids back home, had to go to school every day. But anyway, when I was down here, for the most part, I would ski with Queenie. And then we would also perform like they do um, still today, although not so much, with elephants. Um, but we would perform in the circus and do a circus act, if you will, here. We had a circus ring set up. and. We not only had Queenie that I worked with, but we had llamas that did a liberty drill. We had um, miniature Sicilian donkeys and um, a dog and two monkeys that did your typical dog and pony show, as they call it. And we had a zebra that did what's called a pick-out act. And in that situation, there would be a rack with numbers on it from zero to nine. And they were like wooden tabs, and on the top of the wooden tab would be like a webbing that the zebra could pick up in its teeth. And so when either my dad or, or the other lady that we worked with um, worked that act, she would ask kids in the audience to give two numbers that add up to no more than nine. So the kids would holler out, four and four. And so... Mrs. Ray would say to the zebra, now did you, did you get that? And the zebra would go like this and would circle around and stop and pick up number eight. So, and then they would do a subtraction and, and things like that. So, the people in the audience thought the zebra was really pretty smart. Could you tell us about Queenie's temperament and intelligence, being that you had such a close relationship with her? Well, any elephant is a very social creature and because she and I had such a close bond it was like at times we were inseparable. Um, eventually as, as I got older and moved away and got married I would come back to our zoo to see Queenie and I'd open the door to the barn because this would be in the winter and she'd have to be in where it was warmer. I would call out her name and she'd trumpet and carry on because she was so excited to see me. But um, when I was growing up with her, if, if I was sad about something, she could sense it. And maybe I had a fight with my little boyfriend from fifth grade or whatever and I'd be crying so Queenie would go like this with her trunk and you know it was like to say okay it, it'll be okay <laughs> and um, you know she she had moods too she would be silly and giddy and crazy at times and other times she'd be kind of sad but um, very intelligent very social animal how old were you when you started the act with Queenie? Well, I was nine when we got her, and so I was probably 11 or 12 
because I was so small, my dad didn't think that I had strength enough or, or was big enough to work with Queenie. Because mind you, when she and I performed, I wasn't just a girl in the in the show for the glitz and the glamour. I was the one telling her what to do. Even when <clears throat> excuse me, even when we would do different mounts whereby she would pick me up or I would um, I even did a headstand on the top of her head, but it was just she and I. No man, no other person was anywhere near us. In fact, half the time my dad wasn't even standing on the sidelines. He was off doing something else. So, um, you know, if, if we didn't have that close of a bond, I don't think I, I would have been able to do that because for the most part, if you're fortunate enough to ever see another elephant in a circus, you'll see that it's usually a man that's directing the elephants and the girls are just there for for the styling, as they call it. Yeah. Did you do a ring show? Was that a paid show, that the, the special show that you had, the circus with the monkeys and the trained dog and everything? We, we did that here. Yeah. But did well, you say was it a paid? Yeah. Was it separate or was that part of just the? the no, it springs? was all part of. Oh, it was a of free, what free, people, freebie. It was yeah. a free show. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All part of what they got to enjoy when they came to the springs. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, back when I was here, it was a privately owned corporation. Um, uh -huh. You know, it wasn't state owned. Uh huh. But. It's so wonderful that the state has taken the initiative to, uh, to put funding into it because this, like Silver Springs, you know, who knows what ever would have become of this place and Silver Springs had the state not stepped in. But the, the best part of my story of Queenie, though, is when we were separated for 38 years and we got back together. And she absolutely remembered me. <laughs> and I saw her like five times after, that, well, four more times after that first time that we were reunited. And every time that I would go back to see her again, um, there was just that much more bonding. Yeah. The last time that I saw her, I'm not really paying that much attention to her, but she's standing there with her leg out. and the gal who was there at Wild Adventures where Queenie ended up, she says, oh my goodness Liz, look at Queenie's leg. Well, what she was doing was reaching out to me to touch me. And I wasn't paying any attention to her. Then of course I put my leg out too. The interesting thing is the day that we sold Queenie, the hired man that we had that was excellent with her, she was doing the same thing to him. And I never put the two together until I went back into one of my old scrapbooks, dug out some old pictures, and sure enough, Queenie's doing that to him. And it's like, don't leave me, you know, I'm, I, I need your comfort. Stay close to me. Mm -hmm. So. It's a sweet story. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wish she were here today. Yeah. But I, I do have a part of her with me. It's probably not going to be picked up on the, the video. But the white in the middle is a piece of her tusk from when oh. she was a little baby. Oh, that's lovely. And the sterling Beautiful. silver elephant that's in the middle, my sister-in-law had given me that probably 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I always, always wore it. But I didn't want to wear two pendants, so I went to my local goldsmith mm -hmm. and he created between he and I collaborating, he yeah. created this. Yeah. And it's probably Beautiful. really hard to see, but there's some black around the edge in okay. the gold. Uh -huh. It's embedded in the gold. Mm -hmm. That's a piece of hair from Queenie's Oh tail. my goodness, really. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. You can always keep her close to you. Absolutely. That is very special. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So that's a, That's a real unique twist on a childhood pet, isn't it? Well, yeah, <laughs> and, and how many kids that, that have grown up with an animal can go back and visit it when they've got kids of their own and you know yeah. all my kids get to see her my grandkids Wonderful. all got to see her Wonderful. and of course my husband saw her when he and I first met uh -huh. 
and um, then we revisited her. Well, he, he went twice, I think, up to Valdosta with me Very nice. to see her. So, how I wish she was here today, because I miss an elephant hug. I've got tears in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs>